Okay, well, welcome everyone on this snowy winter day. And it's very beautiful out, but it's cold. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do the call to order. I'll let Mindy do that. Okay. Um, Ada Anderson. Here. Andrea Suhaka. Barbara Boyer. I'm here. Bob Brucker. Present. Chris Lynn. Good morning. Connie Ward. Good morning. Dave Appel. Here. Don Perez. I'm here. Donna Mullins. Here. Ed Moss. Said he might be running late. George Teal. Gretchen Lopez. Good morning. Jim Dale. Here. <laughs> Gary Erickson. Here. Perla Geller. Bill Cernani. Present. John Wood. Gary Haight Vogel. Darren Tessier. Here. <clears throat> Steve Conklin. Good morning. My screen is frozen, but hopefully you can hear me. We can. Thank you. Awesome. Tom Mahowald. Valerie Robson. She also said she'd be running a few minutes late. Wynn Shaw. Present. Okay. And could we have the guests that are, that are on board? Um, let me know who they are so I can add them to the agenda. Debbie Haney, Castle Rock Senior Center. Allison Cutting, Douglas County. Okay. That all? Jennifer D'Ambrosio, Douglas County. For what it's worth, Tex Elam is here too. Hi, Tex. <laughs> we can't forget Tex. You're all right. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. I always like to see my Douglas County friends in here as guests. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'd like to open it up for public comment now, if there's anything somebody would like to bring to our attention. No? Okay. Then we'll move on. Um, yep. I'm sorry. Carrie, this is Allison. I was trying to find the un my unmute button. Okay. Um, I just want to let everyone know that Douglas County is going to have our older adult town hall on February 29th here in Castle Rock. And we're going to be discussing the um, outcome of our older adult initiative that we had and more information to come, but we would love to have as many people attend as possible. And we're going to do it a little bit earlier in the day. So starting at 430, but it will be in person and online. Thank you, Allison. Great. Wonderful. We're looking forward to that. So um, I, I do have something I want to share in my report, but first and foremost, I would like to just comment at what a beautiful celebration of life for Kathy Noon. And I saw a lot of your faces there. The room was packed. The tributes were genuine, and um, Kathy was beloved by so many people and really blessed, I think, everyone that she came in contact with. So it was just really a lovely celebration. Yeah, it was quite touching. I still miss seeing Kathy in one of the boxes. Um, on my screen. So she's always in spirit with us. And I know we've all learned a lot from her guidance and leadership and just her caring heart. So I wanted to see that or say that. 
And then the other thing I wanted to share and more to come on this, it was the senior coalition group um, that I mentioned earlier that I went to and I learned about a company that um, I'm going to get more information on. And Jayla, you may already know of them. They're called MedRide. And what I found out yesterday is that, um, as Barbara said earlier, their caring heart really stood out to me. They are just a transportation company and they, they do it very well. So I am going to meet, they have three, they serve the entire state of Colorado. They have 300 employees, 250 vehicles. They have cameras inside and outside of their vehicles. They do the white glove um, door through door. And for the longer trips, it would be cost prohibitive. But I think for some of our shorter trips, it's worth looking into. So Jayla, I am scheduling a meeting with them and I will give you a full report. Okay. And Jayla, uh, yeah, I wonderful. had sent- Yeah, I, I have that you, packet. Yeah, uh -huh. I'd sent you contact information a while we, ago. We have, um, as you know, we don't have any money. So we've been <laughs> leery to- um, start any new partnerships. Um, however, uh, I have had the opportunity just briefly to talk to them um, at the Jefferson County meeting that I was at recently. And um, we are probably gonna stop partnering with one of our contractors, CarePool, because we're just not feeling like that's a good match anymore. Um, so uh, this is something that we can certainly look into. I passed uh, uh, that information on to Travis and Sharon. So we will um, continue to look at that, but it's a hard time right now to start any partnerships when I'm looking at cutting. Um, uh, well, Jayla. So, yeah, that's hard. Jayla, my thought was, and I, I, I agree with what you said, but we may actually refer clients to them directly. Oh, that's great. So that because our funding, we're anticipating a cut. Other providers are going to get a cut. If we can find a cost-effective alternative right. for folks that can pay, and this is yep. why I'm meeting oh, with them great. to do a vetting process. And I, know, we all know we need to work smarter. And in order to do that, we need to look for other options. So um, more to come from my great. side on that. Great. Okay. I've got a question regarding that. Um, is can you find out if that organization would have contracts with different municipalities, maybe? What I they, found out yesterday, mm -hmm. just very briefly, is that they do have a contract with I don't know miss municipalities, maybe Barbara knows, but with providers, healthcare hospitals, things like that. And it's a little bit of a reduction of rate. Um, but I will share whatever I learn with this group next month. And if I may, um, they will set up contracts with anyone if they're not doing a service. They're even starting to take handicapped children, um, you know, someone that uh, disabled in a wheelchair or something. Uh, they talked about a child that hadn't been to school because they didn't have transportation. So they did a contract with the school or the school district. So they are flexible. And I would note this to anyone that's talking to them. They are negotiable. So, you know, keep that in mind. Don't just take maybe their first offer. Oh, I won't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I you wouldn't, won't. Carrie. <laughs> okay. But they're great to work with. Yeah. Carrie, I'd like to echo what you said about their good heart. They were... Um, a partner with our Vintage and Vibrant event last September and very receptive to being innovative and flexible, as you mentioned. So I would certainly um, echo your your impression about their good good and compassionate heart. Thank you, Gretchen. I, yeah. I appreciate So, so that. would I, Tech Elam, so would I. They, good. They are unique. Oh, that is so good to hear. I mean, if Tech's, and Gretchen, give them a thumbs up. That says a lot. So I'm excited to meet with them, Jayla, and I'll connect with you and then share with the group. Um, great. Uh, yeah, if you think that's appropriate. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. 
All right, well, let's move on to Jayla's report. All right, um, Mindy, we, we would also like to just do a little bit of a, a tribute to uh, Kathy Noon. I had the, the privilege of meeting Kathy probably 17, 18 years ago. Um, and I remember being a little intimidated by her. Um, she was introduced to me as the, one of the founders of the city of Centennial, right? And I thought to myself, as I was thinking over the years, what word, I kept on thinking, wow, right? So I'm just going to read to you a little bit of what I wrote. It's, it's not a poem or I'm not very poetic, but um, when I first met her, I, I, I thought, wow, she's so smart and articulate. Wow, I can't believe she just said that. She had such a way to be professionally direct. Um, and I admired that. Um, wow, she really does her research. I got to know her better as she joined the Advisory Committee on Aging. Um, and I said, wow, she's, she really does care. Wow, she's so thoughtful. She, wow, she's so supportive. Wow, she's so innovative and has good ideas. Then I said, wow, she's a mayor. <laughs> and then I said, wow, she really is affecting change. She's, wow, she's implementing programs in Centennial and walking her talk. I got to know her on a more personal level and I thought to myself, wow, she and Jim are such a dynamic couple. And wow, what a proud and good mother she is. And wow, how she loves her grandchildren. And then when she came to, to be the ACA chair, I said, wow, she has high standards. Wow, she's so generous with her time and knowledge. Wow, she's a strong advocate for us and the people we serve. And then she got cancer. And I said, wow, she's so strong. And wow, she's so determined and persistent, trying to find those opportunities for treatment, right? Remember those times? Wow, she's so brave as she tries those things and goes through that treatment. Wow, she's using her skills for wings of hope and to improve treatment for pancreatic cancer. And in the end days, I said, wow, she's still contributing. She's still contributing. Wow, she's so selfish, selfless with her time. Guys, she was helping our staff just a week before she passed with the bylaws, with the ACA bylaws of all things. And now I say to myself, wow, I miss her. And wow, I learned a lot from her. And wow, how lucky we all are to have known her and worked with her and laughed with her. Woo. Okay. That's beautiful, Jayla. <laughs> um, Thank you. We're all now crying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jayla. Um, Nice, oh, nicely done, Jayla. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, talk about the report. <laughs> Thinking about Kathy. Now just get to business, Jayla. <laughs> um, we had a meeting um, with TF and Associates. That's the consultant we hired to help us uh, develop uh, partnerships with hospitals and insurance companies. Um, and we're, we're really doing well with them. They did a workforce and provider capacity analysis. They reviewed um, opportunities in the market. They reviewed our operational elements that, need, that might need to be adjusted should we partner in this space, right? 
Um, and then um, they developed, we're in the process of a, developing a payer outreach plan, which is really um, uh, so helpful. Uh, the goal, remember, with this has always been to diversify revenue opportunities. We want to bring more money into the pot, right? We have state money, we have federal money, we have veterans money, we have money from HICPUF, we have money from um, uh, uh, the Colorado Refugee Services Program. We want to add more money into that pot of services or into the pot so that we could um, provide more services to people in our region. Uh, we're looking at, uh, they did an analysis of those of those people on Medicare Advantage programs and um, kind of showed us that the most, uh, most United has the biggest uh, membership in our region, followed by Kaiser, Humana, and then Centene, which is a Medicaid product. Um, and we're really trying to look at what they want and need. We're not, they are the consultants. Um, the good news is they really think that we should continue, continue to serve the 60 and over crowd and not go into a younger crowd. So that's good news. We don't need to add any new services. We need to just continue doing what we already do. So that's good news. Um, there might be some uh, adjustments that we have to make to our data collection and to our um, uh, like our, our uh, finance and finance team as we go much like veterans, which is a billing kind of program. This would also be that kind of a program. Um, but it's really, I, I was so pleased to hear their initial findings and recommendations which were, you just need to keep doing more of it and you need to get money for services. And that's exactly what we're hoping to do. So uh, we will give you probably a more formal presentation uh, in a couple of months. Uh, I am gonna ask them to come and give you a formal presentation on where we're at and what we think we can do. Of course, we would be using our contracted providers to provide these services all across the region. So it's us and our contracted providers. That's always been the goal. So good news on that front. Um, it's moving along quickly. Uh, and we are, uh, I, I'm feeling like we're about ready to start that initial, um, those initial conversations with health systems in particular, uh, to talk about needs and how to package those service needs. I also had the opportunity to meet with the new senior specialist on aging at the, at the um, Department of Human Services. And she is Christine Burroughs. She has been a part of our family for a while. She worked at Jewish Family Services. She worked at Next 50. She worked at Easter Seals. Um, she's been in our world for a while and it was wonderful to see her in this new role. She's doing a blueprint, a strategic plan on aging for the state. And we had the opportunity to talk about a lot of things, of course, the needs and challenges in the region and in the state, um, what some of those, uh, you know, some of the COSOA results, uh, some of the challenges that the area agencies on aging are facing across the state. Um, we talked a lot about public-private partnerships and, and what that could do um, and the new uh, regulations that are coming down the pike from um, ACL uh, and um, how that's gonna change the way we're doing our work. And also, I, I, I mean, the need, it's just ridiculous to have new regulations without any new money. And there's, I don't know how we're going to accomplish those things if we don't get more funding. They have a real desire she has a real desire to be more effective at the federal level. And we talked a lot about that. Um, you know, AJ and I have the benefit of being on a few national committees 
where we're hearing national trends in Medicare and um, with ACL, uh, the Administration on Community Living, sorry. And, um, you know, we have the benefit of having federal lobbyists at Dr. Coggins, so that's huge. And I think we can be a real resource to her as she starts to figure out how to partner um, with more than just the Administration on Community Living uh, and really uh, learn more about what's happening on a national level and with other state units on aging, um, New York in particular. I continue to be impressed with what New York is doing at the state level to support their area agencies on aging to develop statewide partnerships with insurance and uh, insurance in particular, um, really looking at the opportunities for our area agencies on aging in that world of social determinants of health. And I hope we're able to do that um, in the state of Colorado in the near future. Uh, I had the opportunity, uh, Doug and I, and our director of transportation, Ron Papsdorf, and our director of um, planning, uh, Sheila Leach, uh, Sheila Leach, it's wrong, sorry. Um, Lynch. She, uh, Lynch, yeah. I, I was like, why can't I find the name? Um, uh, we had the opportunity to meet with Congresswoman Caraveo yesterday. Um, we just took the opportunity to meet with her and talk about what Dr. Cog is doing in the area of transportation and, and regional planning, especially in the housing assessment we're doing and in the area of aging. Um, she was very interested in what happened with Senior Hub, and I'm going to talk about that later in the agenda. And uh, really um, how we were going to work with Adams County and other contractors to restore services that Senior Hub uh, was, was doing. I also wanna take the opportunity to remind you that all and uh, to, tell, to tell you and your friends that uh, this is general enrollment period for Medicare Advantage programs. So if folks are on a Medicare Advantage program, um, they can change their Medicare Advantage program, go to a new one between January 1st and March 31st, um, or they can switch back to Medicare, um, original Medicare and a separate drug program. There are different requirements and restrictions during this time. So if someone wants to in particular go from a Medicare Advantage program back to the traditional Medicare, it's important to talk with the SHIP counselor because there's, uh, it's important to understand what those differences and out-of-pocket expenses are um, and what the benefits are. Uh, once you go, when you're going back to a, a tr original Medicare, um, there's uh, different requirements than when you first have that opportunity to go on whether original Medicare or a Medicare, Medicare Advantage program. I also wanted to tell you about, uh, we just got the semi-annual report from Nimble. Um, remember Nimble is our uh, fall prevention balance program that you can use on your phone. Uh, we signed up or they signed up 4,154 new participants and reactivated 5,500 that were enrollees. So the enrollees said, hey, I wanna to continue to do that. Or some came back, they were still on the books like my mom, she had stopped and then she started again. Um, I think Murphy Houston from the radio show also started again. So um, that's good, good stuff. Um, between February, this continues to be the largest fall prevention program in the country um, between February 22nd of 2021 and December 30th of 2023. So that's less than a three year period. We've signed up over 28,000 people to be on this uh, program. So that's uh, really good news. Uh, and that's my report. And I'll, I'd be happy to ask any, answer any questions. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How much have we paid Nimble 
during that Ooh, I don't time I period. don't have that number I don't know if Sharon's on I don't know what the number is sorry but we can get that for you Sharon, I would are you on to see that sorry you yes I am on. I'm uh let me look that up and I can I can send that to you <laughs> thank you Kayla yeah. Kayla Mm -hmm. They have added a new program also on um, bladder control. Yeah. It's interesting. It is. That is, uh, that's a really big issue, right? It's a big issue for isolation. Um, we learned a lot about bladder control and how it keeps people in house during COVID because I had people tell me if I don't have incontinence supplies, I'm not going out. I'm not period. Um, and, and I get that. Um, and then rushing to the restroom is also a, an issue with uh, falling. Um, there's falls that are associated with that. And so um, uh, some of the medical partners that they have worked with has said, this is an issue and we really need someone to um, uh, help us with with uh, bladder control. So, yeah. So that part we're not paying for, but. <laughs> okay. Any Might other we... questions? Barbara here. Might we not be able to find some funding in if somebody wanted to renew, they had to pay and we're just helping new people? I mean, I, I believe we've been giving them close to $800,000 a year. Um, and I've always had a little bit of problem with the fact that they are for-profit, though the other side of that coin is the whole fall prevention and the excellence of the program. But again, maybe that's a way to, you know, find some extra dollars for some of the other pressing issues. I think we are, uh, we are told, well, um, this risk, this program is at risk. It is not a must do program, a must do of the Older Americans Act. Um, it is definitely, it might be eliminated in our funding and might be cut uh, or, or reduced significantly because it's not a must do of the Older Americans Act program. Um, we are working with them and Kaiser to see if we can sustain because really it's only an $80 membership, right? So we're paying $80 for participant membership. That's what we're paying for. Um, and these and are so, people that have to have a certain level of cell phone. So probably no, they you can don't, afford. Well, no. And, and well, here's, here's the thing. The Older Americans Act programs don't really allow for um, cost sharing, sliding fee scales. So mm -hmm. the new regulations that we hope will be out in March do. And Sharon and I agree with you wholeheartedly, Barbara, that this is something we really need to think about in a multitude of areas, right? Helping people, chore is a perfect example. Helping people, they can't pay the $80 that, that someone charges to mow their lawn, uh, you know, for, for a month um, or one time, I don't, I, I don't have a lawn, so I don't know what that is. Um, uh, um, but they, but they could pay $20, right? And so could we find, could we look at ways to help more people who can't pay the full cert, uh, the, the full payment for something like that? Um, but we're not paying for the whole thing ourselves either. So that is something, as soon as we get those regulations, we are committed to explore. It is harder on the back end for Dr. Cog. We have to have more monitoring and more, um, uh, you know, making sure we get all the payer um, that, that it just requires more bookkeeping in a way um, than a regular service. Uh, so there's an infrastructure piece to that. And I was actually talking with Christine uh, Burrows about that because she ran those programs at Jewish Family Services. And I was asking her 
how'd that go? What do you need to think about? And she said, when we get to that, that she'd be willing to help us. So that's really, um, really wonderful. But until now, uh, we have asked the state union on aging a couple of times if we could do sliding uh, fee scales and they, uh, and they wouldn't let us do that. Um, so now we have the, hopefully we, that language still stayed in in the review process and we will be able to um, do those in the future. I would love to see that happen to go to a fee, a sliding scale um, because then we could really stretch services. Yeah. That'd be really good. Well, we'll be excited to hear what you come up with and what you hear back from Christine. What is her new official title? She is the new senior specialist on aging. Wonderful. Okay. Whenever the I... new part isn't I, the new is it did there. <laughs> okay. Um, well, whenever I see her, I still see her as a third grader when, because oh, she was oh, yeah? friends with my daughter um, <laughs> and lived in our neighborhood. So, and oh, when, that's, that's great. what she still looks like to me is the third grader. Okay. <laughs> Um, any other questions from JLo or can we move on to do the consent agenda? Can we look for approval of our December 1st meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. Any opposed? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Carrie, just uh, add, uh, adding that... Uh... The reason why I wasn't there, because it was a not a regularly scheduled meeting, and my wife had me in Mexico. Oh, I feel really bad for you, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Right. So there's no opposing it. It looks like it is passed. We have approved that. Okay. Well, now we're going to get an update from Rich, a legislative update. Are you on, Rich? I there am. Is. Good morning, everybody. All right. You can you can tell it's the legislative season because he's wearing a suit. <laughs> I know. He just got back from the Capitol. It's like, oh, wonderful. However, I will say that more and more men are going without ties these days. So <laughs> that's something, I guess. Um, so I think I will start. I know there's something in uh, attachment in your packet, and we can get to that in a second. Um, but let me just start with um, a couple of updates on legislation. And this is this is specific to Dr. Cog, just two bills I wanna mention. So there are other bills out there potentially that we'll be um, reviewing. So if, I, if there's anything that you've become aware of or are interested in, um, when I'm done, don't hesitate to, to, to bring that up. Um, so at the last Dr. Cog board meeting, we presented two bills for their consideration dealing with aging issues that they uh, voted uh, to support both of them. Uh, first one is Senate Bill 40, which is the uh, AAA funding bill. And the second one is House Bill 1052, which is, a, um, I think the short title is a Senior uh, Income Tax Credit. Um, I'll start with 1052 first. That is sort of, I would call it a resurrection of a bill the legislature passed, I think, two sessions ago. That was a one-time tax credit for older adults. Um, my recollection is that it was Representative uh, Degree Kennedy carried that bill. It certainly was his idea. Um, there was uh, they were going through at the end of the session, really at that time, various ideas for uh, structuring the Tabor refunds that year. And um, to his credit, Representative Degree Kennedy brought up that none of them were specific to, to older adults. And um, 
that was in the converse in the context of other conversations going on about the senior property tax exemption or what a lot of people call the homestead exemption and so he was able to convince the governor and his colleagues that it was a good idea to at least come up with a one-year uh, tax credit that um, would would be specifically for older adults and specifically for older adults that did not take the homestead exemption. Um, and then there were also added some uh, income parameters. So it, so, it, so it is, and this bill mirrors that. And so there are, um, let's say, uh, um, income limits or resource limits and that sort of thing to, so that it benefits um, lower income uh, and it's not super low income, but uh, it's not every single senior. Senior, and I think part of the the um, the data shows that you know as you go up in the income levels, you're, you're the, those folks are more likely to own a home and be taking the uh, the the property tax exemption. So anyway, that bill is out there. It hasn't been uh, calendared yet, um, but uh, the Dr. Card board did support that. Um, the other bill, which you guys are all probably aware of, because Dr. Cog's been trumpeting uh, it for a long time, <laughs> but it's essentially the embodiment in, in, in some level of the public awareness campaign and, and the efforts that we've been working on since last summer to increase funding uh, for the area agencies on aging. Uh, this particular bill has the appropriation for $5 million in it. It also has two provisions dealing with a little bit more of the longer term issues of sustainability. And one of those provisions is to require that the overall line item of state funding for senior services be increased annually by inflation. And the other provision in there is that it directs the Department of Human Services to work with the Office of State Planning and Budgeting and the AAAs this year to evaluate the adequacy of the level of state funding for senior services and to report on that analysis or evaluation this August and make that report to the Joint Budget Committee and to the Joint House and Senate Human Services Committees with the idea that if the analysis shows that there should be another increase or some other kind of um, provisions made for uh, sustainability of the AAA funding, that if, the, if that comes out in August, that gives enough time for the governor to factor that into his budget request, which will come out in November. The bill also requires that that similar uh, evaluations occur once every three years to continually evaluate that adequacy. Um, there's a lot of things going on around this. I know the department, well, they've only had one meeting of a group that they I've been invited to participate in to, to address or to discuss AAA uh, funding and the, the sustainability of it. Um, and I've, I've had a number of people contact me about other ideas for this bill, um, things like why we could also see about getting a, uh, a, an increase based on the rate of growth of the over 60 population. Um, but I will say that um, we're starting to hear some pushback from the governor's office that they're not crazy about statutory required increases. And so we may have to deal with that. Uh, we've got a very strong sponsor in Senator Danielson and she's not afraid to push hard uh, for what she believes in and for what her uh, advocates want. And so we're glad for that. Um, so more to come on that. But what I've told everybody is, and, and to back up real quick, so we we I'm almost forgot to say hey, we had the first hearing in committee yesterday, <laughs> uh, and Jayla testified. We had a good panel, um, and uh, Chris Lind 
testified as well. We had a panel of AAA directors testify, a panel of uh, providers testify, and um, representatives from uh, several of the uh, statewide uh, aging advocacy organizations, and then a hand handful of other people who testified on their own. Um, we ended up getting an eight to one vote, and which was, was very good. Um, but the bill goes directly to the appropriations committee and will sit there until the, uh, really pretty pretty close to the end of the long bill process because it will be um, part of that whole conversation um, that the JBC will be having about essentially how much money they think they have to spend this year and whether or not they can include an additional $5 million because that wasn't in the governor's budget request. So they're gonna have to decide that they can come up with the money. Um, the best scenario for us is that the JBC, probably during figure setting um, or some other vote, uh, does vote to add $5 million to the state funding for senior services line item. And we've been working on that with our fantastic um, contract lobbyists to make sure that they're continuing to hear that. And so I'll, and I, and so anybody who wants, if you've got friends on the joint budget committee, whether if it's Rachel Zenzinger or Shannon Bird or Emily Sirota or Barbara Kirkmeyer or Rick Taggart, or uh, Bridges. don't hesitate to contact them. I'm telling, and, and Bridges, you're right, Phil. And thank you for talking to him. Um, they they've, they have heard the message enough to, to the fact that they're indicating a willingness to consider something and they've actually been, and you may have heard, they've actually been kind of tough on the department for not being proactive about this, um, which was nice for me to hear. Um, but we, we, we're, we're still gonna need to keep the pressure on so that they really are willing to essentially find the money to put into the budget. Because if they don't, then we're going to end up having to compete with dozens of other bills that are in appropriations committees that um, also are going to be wanting money. And uh, we, there's no way we'll get the amount that we're asking. So I think our best chance of getting the at least the $5 million that we're asking is to convince the JBC to put it in the long bill. Um, so those are the two bills. Um, I can go on to the contingency fund, but maybe I'll stop for a minute. And I'm not paying attention to time, so you, you guys let me know if we're, if we're going over. Rich? Uh, see if there's I, comments or questions on. Yeah, Donna. Um, we have a note that came through Jefferson County that Rachel Zending, I can't say it right, said that she picked the program for a state emergency contingency. Yeah, that's fund. the one that's in this attachment that I'm that I will talk about in jail okay. too. Um, okay, I'm I just wondered if what that was bet. all about. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that as soon as we hear from Bob and if there are any other questions on other bills. Okay, thank you. Oh. Rich, this is okay. so. Rich, I'd yes. like to add one item. Phil, let me let let me let Bob go, and then why don't you go, and then we'll do Doug. Go okay, ahead, thanks. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, one, the first one, could, could you remind us why DHS was not more supportive? And the second one is on this uh, this idea of uh, evaluating the adequacy of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that going to be measured? Okay, so the first question is, I'll start <laughs> by saying, uh, we've been doing this for what, Jayla, over 20 years now. And the department has never been what I call supportive. Uh, they've never been proactive about this. It's been us, the advocates, that have initiated these efforts every time they've happened. This year, this time though, I was I was disappointed that they actually they actually they didn't come right out and say they opposed it, but they actually put off very negative vibes. And um, they sent a letter to uh, C4A, you know, the statewide association of triple A's indicating that they had, uh, they wanted to first address concerns that they had about carryover 
uh, among some of the triple A's and about um, what I'd call them like DEI issues or whether or not there was enough contracting with minority uh, providers or, or that, that sort of thing. Um, I think those issues yeah. to the way since then. Um, and uh, the governor's office has, uh, as I understand it, said that for the time being, they're going to stay neutral and engaged on the conversation. On the right. adequacy one, the way the bill's written, it's pretty broad for like the group of us, CDHS and OSPB and the AAAs, to kind of decide how they're going to do that. That may or may not be a good idea. We, you know, we may need to look at amendments. Um, but I know we've we've got ideas, and 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 they have different ideas as to how we would measure that. So I would just say, hang in there on that right now. Um, we're open to suggestions, um, but for the time being, the way the bill's written, it's 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 pretty broad language. Okay, thanks, Rich. Uh, yeah. Um, Phil, did you have anything else? Yes, uh, Rich. I I just wanted to uh, to mention uh, another bill that Shannon uh, and you might want to be paying attention to, right. and that's House Bill ten sixty six. All right. That Let me. Let me come back to that because if, if Doug has a comment on this issue, okay, I should let my boss speak. <laughs> no, uh, thank you, Rich. And actually, I, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to just, um, I guess, highlight something you had mentioned earlier with regards to the hearings yesterday. I just, you know, I, I know you mentioned uh, Chris Lynn was there and provided testimony in one of the panels. So, Chris, I just wanted to personally thank you sir for taking time to do that i think it definitely made a difference nothing but positive responses from committee members and of course the bill sponsors but it was it was a really really good conversation also want to uh, shout out to to frank bruno as well that served on that same panel as chris um so so just know we were well represented by um by the folks that we had in the room so thank you thanks doug Thanks right, for Phil, that opportunity. I really do appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm always happy to, and I'm sure other providers would be happy to do that as well. Anytime. I'm sure there'll be opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll make sure of that. <laughs> um, all right, Phil, we'll, I'll put that on the list, though, House Bill 10, 20, 10, 1066 to take a look at. Because it uh, it deals with um, in part, uh, it's it's supported by the Nurses Association, but particularly. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, with violence in nursing homes and assisted yeah. facilities. And yeah, we have started to look at that. We've got that in our pipeline to look at. So, yeah, thanks. Okay, so should we talk about the contingency slash emergency fund? Um, there's the memo, I think, in your packet, what is it, attachment B, discusses a broad outline of that. And um, yeah, Donna, that's right. I think you and, and actually a couple of other people had <laughs> forwarded to us um, other emails that they'd received that about Senator Zinzinger talking about this. Um, so this, this, this actually, I, this idea actually, um, I guess goes goes to what uh, Jayla was mentioning with the problems with the the Meals on Wheels services in Adams County, and uh, conversations that that I was having with our contract lobbyists at Bowditch and Jennifer Castle um, about God, is there anything we could do this year? to help that situation. And we kind of cooked up this idea about maybe what we really could use or the AAAs really could use was some sort of emergency fund. And there are other programs in the state uh, that have similar things. So that's kind of what got us thinking about it. And so uh, we had talked to Senator Zenzinger um, and came and basically worked up a proposal for her and she she was wonderful she's been wonderful in pushing that that issue and the idea is and 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 the direct and she brought it to before the jbc like 
the day after we had given her <laughs> the fact sheet and um, really convinced her committee members uh, that it was a good idea. They um, met again a couple days ago or a couple days after that and directed their staff to have a bill drafted. And I've been in communication with the staff answering some questions about that. And so what they did was they said, this isn't necessarily under the rules, something that could be put in say the department's supplemental bill. Cause they're doing, they're doing the supplemental process for the, this current fiscal year now. So it seemed like an, a perfect idea, but what they did say was we can still have a bill drafted and have that bill be what they call like an orbital bill that it would be introduced and moved along as a companion to the long bill or i'm sorry the supplemental package which we think is going to be introduced sometime next week uh so and then that's going to move pretty quickly because then the jbc wants to start turning their attention to figure setting on on next year's budget on the long bill so um I think the main question, and uh, I mean, there's, we're, there's, we're, they're still working out the details of how much, you know, parameters and, and constraints and other sorts of uh, provisions to put in the statute. Uh, but the other big issue is, is how much they're going to decide to put in that fund. Uh, we had proposed two million. Um, a couple of the committee members sounded skeptical. Um, and so I think Senator Zinzinger could use help <laughs> convincing JBC members uh, that at least a $2 million uh, to start with on that fund it would be uh, appropriate. Um, but um, that's the one uh, main unknown thing that we don't know yet is going to happen. Well, Rich, you, you should also add that uh, Rachel is a former Dr. Cog board member. Yep. And she's, you know, she's term limited now, so she's running for a Jefferson County Commissioner. Um, but she's been a good, a really good uh, supporter uh, of the AAAs, of Dr. Cog, of aging issues. And uh, we really appreciate having her support on this and her leadership on this. And we're going to miss her <laughs> when she's gone. Um, yeah, any other Rich, comments or questions? That. Yeah, yeah sure. uh, Rachel echoed that to me also. And okay, good. Her her strong memories to serve on Dr. Cog and the importance of AAA, uh, at, and having Jesse Danielson doing her thing that that's really important for us out in this area. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions for Rich? Well, that was a lot of information, Rich. Thank you so I'm much. I'm telling you, it's what, two, two, a little more than two weeks of the legislative session. <laughs> it's already overwhelming. Yeah, no, that's a lot. And again, <laughs> thank you to anybody, all of our groups that went and testified. And I know a lot of people sent emails and letters, and I know that really helps. So thank you. Yeah, it, I mean, I think the the... Um, outpouring of support for this really ever since we started this it's kept building um, ha has really been amazing and I think has really driven home uh, the the points to um, not just the Joint Budget Committee but a lot of other legislators too who are now uh, really actively wanting to support this so thanks to everybody. That is good news we'll take it. But keep it up. <laughs> We're not done yet. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, thanks again, Rich. And we will move on to the update of public awareness from Kelly. Well, Rich, thank you for the segue to this piece of the, the pie today. Um, I just want to update you all on the toolkit that was prepared for the public awareness campaign. And also just to give you a quick demonstration of how to edit the flyer that we created and have shared, but that can be customized 
to specific uh, services by other providers. So we're really uh, eager for that to be used in that way. We sent an email out the same week as the legislature convened, actually the, the day after, with the toolkit about the public awareness campaign. We sent that email to all of you, to all of the triple A's in the state, to half a dozen of community partners that Rich wanted us to share it with, as well as AAA staff. So it, it's been spread pretty far and wide at this point. Um, the toolkit has several pieces to it, and a lot of it came about because of that meeting we had back in September of last year where we got your input about what you thought would be helpful to uh, give you the information you need to talk about the value of, of the AAAs. So in that toolkit, which is a Dropbox, you can find uh, an FAQ document. There is the flyer with the Project Angel Heart client story. And then there's what we call the editable flyer which can be edited to uh, replace the Project Angel Heart uh, story with a story of one of our providers and their contact information. We have social media examples, and we also provided a, a link to a survey monkey form so that people who are using the toolkit and having conversations and interactions if you so choose, would share what those are with us. Um, Rich really likes to know who's doing what and talking to whom. And I think, Rich, you really have uh, made the case that ever since we started working on this, it has made a difference to the legislators and to the Joint Budget Committee. So sounds like we need to keep doing that um, if this is going to take a while to get out of appropriations. Um, we are now posting weekly media posts on all of Dr. Cog's channels on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I'm curious, I just got the links to the posts that have been out there for the first two weeks. Would you all like us to share the links to those postings with you so that you can look at them and like them? I'm seeing nods. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, great. So <laughs> Mindy and I will make sure that we share those links with you um, on the heels of this meeting. And Kelly, um, yeah. could you, can you put the link to the Dropbox in the chat again? Yeah. Well, actually, um, Mindy, can you do that? Well, let me check it out here. I'm not the most proficient in that regard. Um, so the what what we've posted the four uh, social media posts in the month of January. We have two stories of clients who use via mobility. We have the Project Angel Heart story, and we also have a story from a Nimble user. And during the next two months, we will post on a weekly basis more client stories. We'll make sure that we post a client story from every single provider who shared a story with us, at least one story. Uh, Jayla, do I see your hand? You shouldn't have seen my hand, no. Oh. I don't, I didn't raise it, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our next uh, phase with the public awareness campaign is to, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jayla or Rich, but is to start uh, 
to follow up with all the with the toolkit that we shared with more information about the specific bills that are out there so that if people want that information for the conversations and interactions that they're having, um, they'll know more about what those are. Do you all have any? So I guess I'd like to ask for a show of hands of people who've actually accessed the toolkit and looked at what's in there. Ah, ah, oh, good, great. I'm seeing hands, meaning that you've gone into the toolkit. Um, so, and I'm curious, I'll do another show of hands. Have any of you worked with the editable flyer and adapted it to your services yet? Not seeing that. Okay. Well, then I think our time will be well spent on uh, demonstrating how easy it is to adapt the flyer. So that's going to be the next part of my presentation. Fingers crossed that I can bring up the document smoothly. This is not something I typically do. All these years, I have totally relied on Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a Mindy to do stuff, it's kind of hard for me to think about figuring out myself. But let me give this a shot. It's a stretching exercise, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy, did you find the link to the toolkit? I put it in the chat. Okay, we put it in the in the chat, Phil. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the Dropbox. Yes. I mean, can you all see the? Uh, no, uh, Kelly. No, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's see here. I think I need to hit share again. Can you see it yet? Not yet. Okay, Mindy, I might need you to rescue me here. Okay, we'll go with our backup plan here. You have to walk me through as you do it. Mindy's the backup plan. Can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you, Mindy. So with the document, can you scroll down just a little bit, Mindy? Mm -hmm. Thanks. I'm not seeing the comments though. On here, let me see. It's really hard because the little share box covers everything. <laughs> Okay, great. So if so the the idea behind this is that you, contractors or providers can go into it and replace Volunteer of America's uh, logo with your own. And Mindy, if you click on the comment, I can't, um, it's not showing me comments, Kelly. Hmm. It's well, just asking for us to put new ones in. So, but you could. So the document that you all will bring up will have about five or six comments to the side that in essence provide the directions for doing this. So there'll be a direction for clicking on Volunteers of America's logo and replacing it with your own. And then you'll scroll down. And if you want to replace the Project Angel Heart uh, story with your own, there'll be a direction for that as well. Further down on the second page, 
there's the opportunity for keep going, Mindy. You can um, replace Patsy, Doug Patsy with Douglas County if you want to put in a quote of one of your clients. And then finally, you, we would encourage you, instead of putting Jayla's contact information, to put someone from your organization's contact information to follow up if they have questions about um, the public awareness campaign, or they might want to be uh, sent the toolkit, the link to the Dropbox with the toolkit in it. So. It actually is, it's very easy to um, alter the document. The thing that you need to remember to do is to go into, after you make your changes, to go in to each of the comment boxes. And um, there's that little, there's a three little circles. You click on that and you have the opportunity to delete the thread of the, of the uh, comments. After you go into the review mode and can see what, um, what the tracking looks like. And then finally, after you do make your changes, be sure to save the document with a name and put it in your files. So, Editing the editable document is a, a lot easier than sharing a document on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it looks <laughs> For pretty me, straightforward. Anyway. It looks really straightforward, Kelly, and mm -hmm. a lot of good information. What, what questions or comments does anybody have for Kelly? Other than thank you for all your hard work on this, because it really then streams streamlines it for us. And I know that's appreciated by the whole group. Hmm. Uh, Kelly, uh, this is Phil. Is it, um, is there something that can be done with the documents or information that's there uh, for organizations that might be focused on seniors, but may not be a service provider um, uh, through a AAA. Uh, Jayla, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, we took Dr. Cog's logo off so that different organizations could own this. Mm -hmm. um, would there be an issue with a non Dr. Cog contractor doing that? I don't think so. I don't either. Is Doug still on? Doug, do you, do you have concerns about that? What's the question again? I'm I'm trying to understand the question. Okay, uh, Doug, it's it's basically um, we have uh, a number of grantees to our for our Rotary Club. So I'll make it very specific. Right. Uh, provide services, but to uh, the older population, older Coloradans, and if Rich were still on, it's older Coloradans, not seniors. Um, mm -hmm to older Coloradans, um, but um, can have them uh, send information uh, as well, uh, but can use the toolkit. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good question, Phil. I, I I do believe like that editable document that Kelly, Kelly was talking about, um, it seems like it's geared towards um, you know, contractors and the like. I, I don't know, maybe they're you know, maybe we can modify that to, you know, to allow and just have more static information in it. Right. Mm -hmm. That would allow others to, um, to send it along. Yeah. I, you know, I, I definitely don't want Dr. Cog's logo on that. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 obviously we can't control what, okay. what people are going to write, but no, I, I, I hear your point. I think there's opportunity there, right. For, for some individuals to be able to share too. Cause I have, I'm, I'm, I'm also associated with two other organizations that, um, are actually working to um, get the value of reducing isolation uh, and uh, can uh, hopefully ultimately be able to uh, have us leverage us being the AAA, leverage some of that 
and with regard to our contractors that might be more focused on reducing isolation. Uh, and that would actually have uh, the economic benefit or possible economic benefit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let us give us some thought to that internally, Phil. There might be a, you know, fairly quick fix for us to be able to provide something different. Yeah. And uh, M Mindy doesn't allow me to raise my hand anymore. What? <laughs> That's not true at all. She likes that kind of control, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Oh, so I, I'm seeing I'm seeing hands from Gretchen and also from Dave Appel. Yes, um, I'm just wondering who's providing the Medicare counseling piece on that flyer. Is that the SHIP program? The Medicare counseling piece. Yeah, that's mentioned yeah, on the flyer. That's, that's that is SHIP um, uh, with Dr. Cog as well as um, Benefits in Action. Okay. All right, just wondering. And I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to raise my hand, so no, I don't have any questions. <laughs> there must be like a gremlin hand thing going on here, <laughs> except for Bill. Except for Bill. <laughs> well, Dave maybe has has. <laughs> now, I I think um, maybe we'll wait and see what uh, Dr. Cog comes up for non contractors. And, you know, some of the numbers in there, I think we could definitely encourage other people to use if we're really wanting a push for, um, you know, for individuals and outside groups for the advocacy piece. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I do too. I think we can, you know, put some population information in there. I think we can do some numbers of AAA services overall, right? And then uh, individuals could share and then add whatever piece they wanted to. I really like that um, as well, Jayla. And I I think of Gretchen right off the bat with the senior council in Douglas yep. County and then other councils throughout. Wouldn't it be wonderful if yeah. people from all over were sending letters of support? Yep. I think okay. that's great. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Yep. Very good information. I'm really loving the toolkit and the work everybody did to put that together. So thank you very much. Um, we are gonna move on to get a report um, about what's been going on in Adams County with the Meals on Wheels program and Senior Hub from Jayla. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's hard to believe it was like only a month ago. Because uh, so much has happened, right? So uh, shortly before Christmas, we found out that uh, Senior Hub was not going to be providing uh, home-delivered meals starting January 1st. We found out that they were providing 550 meals to folks in the county. Um, most of those were being paid for by Adams County, like 500 of them were. And we just were paying for the Eastern plains, right? From Bennett to um, Deer Trail. And so we had a lot of data on that because that's what they had to report to us. Only, only um, about 25 to 30 people, I think I actually called 30 or 35 people and some were not a, um, a relevant anymore. So we didn't, we didn't get notice from uh, Senior Hub and weren't prepared for this at all. We did know that they had stopped providing adult day, but we didn't hear that until several weeks after they closed their adult day. And we knew they had stopped their Medicaid contract and we knew that they were um, looking for a new space um, because they, they, um, the landlord needed them to move to another space. That's what we knew before Chris, um, before this all happened. So we were a little wondering what was going on with Senior Hub. Um, and then uh, after we heard about the Meals on Wheels, uh, we kind of all, Adams County and, and I think Doug had meetings with Adams County right away. Um, Volunteers of America stepped up right away and said, hey, we wanna be part of the solution. 
We had joint meetings with Adams County, Dr. Cog and Volunteers of America trying to come up with a plan. What's it going to take? How many people? Who can do it? What, you know, getting all the details that we could. Um, we then uh, started to really kind of parse it out and figure out, okay, we could get volunteers on, uh, volu so we needed money. So we got um, Adams County Commissioners also stepped up in a big way and and um, voted for $50,000 of emergency funds to be directed um, to a senior hub for the Meals on Wheels program. Volunteers of America prepared those meals and then Volunteers of America dropped them off at the at senior hubs building and then the volunteers that were associated with senior hub delivered those meals out that was a short-term solution in the meantime we were working on there was a lot of press so and the other thing that happened is senior hub had closed their doors for the holiday season so they closed their doors for for two weeks um between christmas and new year's uh, which made it really hard. There was a lot of press during this time, as you may recall. And the press wanted to give, Adams County wanted to give people a way to help. So they said, if you're interested in volunteering, because that's the really big need, we could, we could make the food. Um, Volunteers of America could make the food. We had $50,000, which only covers two weeks for 550 people but we needed to distribute it. So we, Dr. Cog became the site that people could call in to volunteer. And our Kel Kelsey Vanderveen and our staff was the one that managed all those calls and took all the information. Um, during that time, those two weeks uh, between Christmas and New Year's, I also called all of our clients in the Eastern Plains. Because Sharon and I were trying to figure out how can we get those meals quickly? The goal was to start on January 3rd or, um, or January 2nd with meals. So how do we do that? How are we going to do that? We wondered, could they use um, a market meal box, right? That's 24 meals. Only one delivery would be required a month. Um, it's frozen foods, whole grains, fresh fruits, vegetables, and um, milk. So I called all of our clients and got a hold of about 30. And I talked to them about that, what their needs were. And it became very clear to me right away, we are serving the absolute right population because these are folks that really couldn't go out and get food on their own, couldn't afford food, didn't drive anymore. I heard folks when I asked them, so could you could you use, I mean, what sounds better to you, a box of food or um, uh, frozen meals? That was the question. And only two people out of that group said that they could use a box of food. Others said, nope, I need the frozen meals, please. One lady said, I am on oxygen and a walker and my gas stove is too dangerous for me to cook on. Um, Another one had just lost his wife and he said he hadn't touched a frying pan until then and he could do eggs and peanut butter and jelly and that's about it. He'd like the frozen meals. One lady said, I can't do fresh fruits and vegetables anymore. My system just doesn't, it doesn't agree with my system. I'd like the frozen meals, please. So then, then we, it became really clear we have to do frozen meals. And we have to do frozen meals because the length of delivery time is very long in uh, out there in the Eastern Plains. And we can't keep the colds cold enough and the hots hot enough um, to meet the food um, safety requirements. So we had to go to frozen foods and they were okay with that. And then um, it was a question of volunteers. So by this time now, now we're at the, so now 
we got the first two weeks covered that $50,000 covered the first two weeks of January. On January 9th, the Adams County commissioners, again, wonderful people, voted to give or, or passed $500,000 of funds that will take them through May, which is awesome. So now all of these folks have food and we're coordinating, working, working with Volunteers of America. They said, we can do the food. That's not the problem. We just need volunteers. We don't have enough volunteers. Some of the um, senior hub volunteers came over to Volunteers of America and some did not. The Older Americans Act program, remember our volunteers are, are required to have background, background checks. Um, and so we had to make sure we could utilize those. That's still a problem. So in the last two weeks, Dr. Cogstaff has been delivering meals to the Eastern Plains um, for these, for um, about 20 people that said they wanted the frozen meals. I think we served today 21 meals um, uh, and two of the staff gone out to all the way again, the five communities between Bennett and, and Deer Trail. So Jill's we're getting it done. Up. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry, Jill. Jayla. Phil's got his hand up. Okay. Hey, Phil. Nope. I no? think he, he lowered his hand and maybe okay. we can let Jayla finish before we ask questions, if that's okay. So, so that's where we are right now. Um, we're getting it done. And so uh, January 2nd, people got food, which is wonderful. We were able to kick into action, work collaboratively with the county and with Volunteers of America and Dr. Cog, and um, really uh, were able to come together fast. We, we worked on our messaging um, with press. We worked on how to deal with volunteers. Um, and now what we're faced with is um, what do we do from May until July when our funding kicks in? I, they haven't applied for funding for us for um, the majority of those meals. So I don't know. I think they're planning on uh, using their own county money. Is that your understanding, Sharon? Yes. Okay, so they're planning on using their own county money um, to continue the program. And then hopefully at one point we will then uh, meet together and figure out uh, what how we're gonna go forward in the future. Doug has got to see that. Yeah. Madam Chair. Doug, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Jayla. Thanks for the update on that. Um, yeah, it was quite the holiday season, no doubt about it. Um, but. I, you know, I just wanted to, again, just reemphasize what Jayla was saying with regards to the partnerships. And it's just so nice to have this level of collaboration and quite fr frankly, friendship um, amongst uh, contractors and, and, um, and uh, you know, our member local governments. I mean, Adams County has just been an absolute gem in all of this. Their staff are highly professional in, the, in every respect. And we've been so proud. Volunteers of America, I mean, Without them, I don't know how we would have done it, quite frankly. I mean, obviously, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't going to be preparing boxes in my kitchen, right? So um, thank God we had them. And they've, they've been wonderful. Um, uh, but I do like on uh, just Dr. Cogstaff that I wanted to shout out. Um, Sharon, Sharon Day, she's been wonderful in working with VOA. I know she's been working with Allie quite a bit on uh, trying to figure out the volunteer aspects of this. Um, Kelsey Van Vanderveen that Jayla mentioned. She's also been such such great help behind the scenes, um, uh, accepting those volunteer calls and and getting something you know coordinated for for the short term and, uh, into the future. And Kelsey and AJ, our own AJ Diantopoulos, I mean they both uh, went out and delivered meals last Friday. I don't know who's doing it today, but um, but it's it's great that we have that that level of commitment from our staff and a willingness to do that. So we're so appreciative, but it sounds like Sharon, correct me if I'm wrong, but going into the future, 
we should have a better uh, better feel for the coordination of volunteers so so that uh you know uh, at least staff won't have to be uh overburdened with um with delivery is that correct sharon Yes, yeah, I think um, uh, the the volunteers um, uh, volunteers of America is, is working with Senior Hubs Volunteer Group, and I think they're poised to be able to, um, starting February, uh, take on the Eastern Plains delivery. So um, we should be good there. Great, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jayla, did, I, I'm very curious as to what happened to get a nonprofit that's been doing this for 35 years to the situation where it was abrupt in two weeks, we're, we're not doing meals. And then I also, my other question is, what kind of plan do they have to move forward? I mean, do we know any of that backstory information? We knew they were having some financial challenges. Franklin was very um, frank about that. Um, he uh, was telling us about, you know, the challenges with the building. Um, we did learn that there's money owed during this process to Golden Corral and to the, the building owner that they were in. I don't know much more than that, right? And so um, we have done audits of them, but you know, when you do an audit, the only thing you can look at is the funds that you give them. You can't look at their whole, their whole business. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think we were all surprised. We knew that there was financial challenges, but most, a lot of our, you know, contractors live pretty close to that line. And, um, uh, we were nervous about that with the new, you know, knowing that there was going to be challenges with our funding and, and, making sure we talk to them about that. But I don't think we had a, a good understanding of this. Mm -hmm. And what's going forward, um, I don't think that we'll see them start again. I, I think um, there still seems to be some question out there, but they have stopped all of their programs and their staff are, are, are leaving. Um, and Franklin is, but, is yeah. applying yeah. for other jobs. so. <laughs> no, indeed, J Jayla, I, I, you know, we're in no position to be answering that question. Yeah. Um, and we, often, quite frankly, we shouldn't be offering up an opinion on what they're, what they may be in the future. But I will say that, yeah, I think, you know, if I had to summarize this, I think there was a lack of communication um, and maybe a dose of transparency along the way that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's, it's, um, it's a good learning lesson maybe for us and, and, and county, um, human services as well to make sure that we're, you know, we have a line of communication, which everybody feels comfortable and confident that we're getting the right information. Right. And um, so we'll, we'll use that information going forth for sure. Yeah. I can tell you that there's a lot of interest in, in making sure that the citizens, the older adults of Adams County have services. And so what that looks like with the County, I'm not sure yet. And I don't think they know yet but they really are very interested in making sure uh, mm -hmm. that those services are restored. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I think Dr. Cog did a fantastic job and I'm not diminishing that in any way. I mean, without the work you, you all did, we, they would be in a big pickle. My concern was, um, you know, we, we see this happen with nonprofits and was there a warning sign? And and there probably was, but Senior Hub wasn't contracted through Dr. Cog, so you didn't know about it. But then the end result is the seniors aren't getting their services. And we've seen that before with, with nonprofits. And so I was just really, I think, I, I get so concerned sometimes because the end result of that, whatever the reason was, it's the seniors that are not getting the services. And of course, that's what this whole group is, is about. And if there was something that was a warning sign or something that you found out, would, could we have done differently? It, that would be a great learning experience for all of us on this call. But it sounds like that wasn't the case. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Phil, you have your hand up? 
I yes, and I I realize, and you've you've made it clear, uh, Carrie, that Senior Hub was not contracted through Dr. Cog, but if something similar happened to a Dr. Cog contractee, um, and the aspect that there's money owed by the nonprofit um, is. Dr. Cog protected from uh, possibly a a lien or an attack financially uh, to cover something that might be owed by the non-contract and or by the contractor. And I'm not looking for an answer right now. That's a note for Rex to take to the legal team to make sure that um, maybe we're protecting the our AAA uh, from any kind of uh, unforeseen attack. Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you for the question and and um, and comment, Phil. No, we 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 do. Obviously, we feel pretty comfortable with the contract language that we have included. That you know we've we've um, you know limited our risk in this manner. Um, I will just wanted to clarify that we do indeed contract with Senior Hub, but it's just for those thirty five meals or so in the Eastern Plains, and we had no indication. Um, that there was any concern about the delivery of those meals until basically it broke, right? Um, which is unfortunate. Again, I think it speaks to, you know, just a, a lack of clarity and communication in, in this process. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just leave it there. It's, 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 a, it's an unfortunate situation and it's quite kind of uncomfortable to be talking about, quite frankly, publicly when we don't know all the, all the specific details. Yeah, we don't. We don't Thank know, but it is, it, it is, it yeah. is, you know, you, you do, I understand what you're saying, Carrie. It's like, can we learn from this? And is there anything that we can um, do? Thank you, Phil, to protect the area agency and aging. And mm -hmm. um, I think those are all good questions. And I, I love uh, sometimes the bu bureaucracy and Doug knows this. So at uh, Dr. Cog is, is challenging for me, but in this case, I love it. I love that we have so many chucks and balances with our funding, right? And we know um, we get reports every month from our contractors. We monitor those reports. We don't pay until a service has been provided. So all of those things are safety nets for our funding and for the AAA, and we have really good contracting people. And so I feel super, super good about, um, and, and we get audited all the time, as you all know. So uh, it's, it's, we have lots of eyes on, on our, our money um, and a lot of, um, just a, a lot of protection, I think. Well, and I think it's clear Dr. Cog does it right. I mean, that's clear to all of us. Um, I'm just, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. I would just hope in my naive mind, I guess, with my rose colored glasses on <clears throat> that I wear quite often, that there would have been communication with a nonprofit serving that many vulnerable seniors that the community could have helped in some way instead of all of a sudden no more services. That to me is just unacceptable and you know, there's no controlling that. We don't get to control it. Dr. Cog doesn't get to control it. But I was um, personally quite disappointed um, that it just was an abrupt stop. And I also know in these rough waters that we find ourselves in with finances and funding, that may happen again to other agencies. <clears throat> I just found out that somebody we had been um, referring to uh, it was Rocky Mountain Stroke Center and Support Group. They closed their doors. And I didn't know until after the fact, <clears throat> excuse me, and our staff had been regularly referring people there for a support group. So I just love that this group has such a strong sense of communication and loyalty to the older adults that we serve. And um Again, it's me just being disappointed in the way that all happened. I know Barbara had her hand up and so did Kelly. Barbara? There I am. Um, I was just gonna note, um, I'm involved with both the 
Arapahoe County Council on Aging and the Adams County um, Aging Network. And we are developing a food drive to take, we normally meet the end of June out there, do a joint meeting of the two organizations and really do some outreach with the Eastern Plains people. So we're also kind of hopefully adding to some of the, or helping to reduce some of the stress. We're letting them know that. That's it. That's great. What I can tell you is that, oh my gosh, these folks are so grateful for all the effort that's been put in to, to restore programs. Um, and so grateful. I mean, when I talk to people in the Eastern Plains and I think AJ had the same experience, gratitude. Thank you for remembering me. Thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for asking me. Um, those were all uh, uh, messages that we heard. And um, I'm just proud of everyone that jumped in and, and the coordination that we were able to have and just, um, you know, people stepping up in, in, in ways that uh, during the Christmas and season, right, that uh, were wonderful and um, we are very grateful for. Well, I hope you have Mr. Erickson drive some of that food out there. <laughs> Doug volunteered. Um, uh, he did. Mr. Erickson said he would do it as well. <laughs> um, Kelly, did you have a comment? Uh, no, that was a phantom hand. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, Doug's again, still, thank Doug, you. Um, Doug still uh, has his hand up. Well, Madam Chair, if I may, I, I did just a couple of things. I know Andrea has a question there, which I'll which I'll address. But I also to Barbara Boyer, um, you know, she needs some assistance with uh, getting the word out about that food drive. The please share. We we'd be happy to try to get the word out, whether that be through social media or whatever. So just let us know, Barbara, and we'd be happy to help. Thank you so much, Doug. That'll be wonderful. I I will take advantage of that. Perfect. I will Great. send stuff. Awesome. Thank you. So Andrea had a question um, uh, primarily related to, <coughs> excuse me, disaster planning. And it's a great, great question. Um, I think it's something we probably need to be uh, a little more direct and formal about probably for our, with our uh, disaster recovery planning type work. You know, we've had instances in the past, right, where, where um, uh, for whatever reasons, contractors couldn't fulfill the entire parts of their contract. And we've We've reached out to other contractors that provide like services to see if they could pick that up. I mean, that's re we really, you know, we operate kind of, you know, really um, on a hope and a prayer that our subs uh, that our contractors can uh, can take up the load, right? Um, and thank God that you know they they do in most cases. And I I'm I'm um I've I'm been thinking about a situation that we had uh well a couple three years ago now probably Chris Lynn when we when uh, senior resource center um when they decided not not to uh do transportation services anymore to to the extent to which they had done in the past and Chris was so good about reaching us out to us early in the process of that and was very active in that transition to via you know, those are the types of relationships that we have true appreciation for. And I know a lot of our contractors are like that. Um, so I think this is, I, I think, I will hope that this is kind of a one-off in this situation, you know, that um, for whatever reason, things just didn't work out the way they did. But I think for the most part that we have such great partnerships that we're able to, um, you know, kind of, you know, transition over a, a, a period of time so everybody feels comfortable with the results so but thank you for the question andrea andrea also this is what that supplemental piece of legislation that rich was talking about right um that if we got uh, something like two million dollars um that the state would have in a pot of money to help area agencies on aging uh, with emergencies like this um uh, I know my colleague in Trinidad, they have a, a they had a need um, for emergency funding and, and didn't have any resources to go to. And Los Animas, um, which is, uh, they their bus went down and that's the bus they used to take 
people to dialysis in Pueblo and they needed to repair the bus and they needed emergency funds and they didn't have any. So um, having an emergency fund for the area agencies on aging to address things that just, you know, maybe a provider uh, isn't able to provide services, maybe, uh, you know, critical equipment goes down um, in Trinidad, their, their building was going into the creek creek it was sliding into the creek um there where they work in their senior center so it was uh uh, uh it, there have been several times over the years that we could really benefit from a, a fund like this so hopefully it will pass and and there will be a resource in the future for for money to um help thank you for that um and for just the whole, thank you for the whole story and how Dr. Cog jumped in and and really made um, a scary situation uh, much less of a worry for the older adults. So good job. And kudos to Doug because Doug jumped in right away. Um, and, you know, he's got connections at high levels um, and it really, it really does make a difference. And thank uh, you, Doug. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to move on, though, to keep us on schedule. Um, Phil, did you have a pressing question? or It before? wasn't a question. It was um, an idea uh, just to share with, uh, with Doug and, and Jayla, as uh, you look at kind of tough situations, um, there are networks of service clubs that I know um, some of them actually do meals on wheels or nourish routes uh, and uh, reaching out to service organizations that may be doing some of this uh, and expanding some of that, not necessarily the meals part, but delivery part. Um, there's a lot of people that have vehicles in the, in the state uh, that do volunteer service at some level. And uh, if it's looking to just cover for a while, um, that might be a, a way to uh, expand some of that disaster or contingency planning. Yeah, Thank that's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Okay, um, let's finish up here. We're going to end on time. And how about the Dr. Cog board reports? Great, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, I agree, thank you to staff, thank you to Doug, thank you to Jayla, thank you to everybody. And, and honestly, thank you to all of you that work with your various agencies and all that you do, it just is, is pretty amazing. Uh, so very cool to be associated with you. Uh, a couple things, uh, thank you Jayla also for the, the comments about Kathy Noon, that was just touching. Uh, and for those that were there, it was a, such an incredible memorial, you know, to me, I, I can't say that I knew Kathy well, but I knew her for a long time because I met her before I was even in, in public service. And she just was a role model of public service, of compassion, of, of dedication, of public service, and just you know, such a such a strong, strong person. So Jayla, thank you for your comments there. Uh, thank you also to Rich for all of your work. Uh, two updates from the Dr. Cog board. At our last board meeting, we had uh, members of the governor's staff to talk to us about the land use bills. You'll remember from a year ago when we talked about the land use bills and some of those issues, and some of those concerns. I will say that, that this year, uh, some of the same concerns in terms of local preemption, uh, things in the legislation that would take away local decision making, and you know, whether or not you agree with parts of the land use issue, if you apply the taking away local control to any issue you care about, any issue in your community that the state could come in and say, here's how it's going to be done, uh, I would just encourage people to think about that as the process continues and as we have those conversations. But we did appreciate the governor's staff coming in and kind of updating us on, on what those look like. Uh, I don't think most of those have been introduced yet. It's going to be an interesting legislative session. Uh, obviously, the the, the uh, older uh, Americans or older resident bills that the that we're looking at are, are positive. Some of the land use things could be a little bit more challenging for, for our uh, at-risk populations and, and people in general. So we encourage you to keep, keep track of that. Uh, and then finally, we are in the process of leadership changeover. At our February meeting, we will elect new officers. So this is my second to last uh, uh, meeting with y'all as, as, as chair, I think. Uh, but uh, 
I have expressed that I want to continue serving on the ACA. Uh, we also have other uh, new folks that, that have expressed an interest. So hopefully you'll be getting some, some other, other faces too from the Dr. Cog board that are a part of this group. Uh, so I think that is the extent of my report, except Phil, uh, I served with you on the Dr. Cog board, which I always enjoyed. I always saw you as a character. And I like the fact you have a, a character as your representation uh, in this. I, I absolutely love that drawing and it, re it reflects you very, very, very well. Thank That's you. All. Thank you, Steve. And I am very happy to hear that you want to continue on with the ACA. You are very valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Wynn, do you have something to share? I do, actually. This is uh, Douglas County and Lone Tree specific, but Lone Tree City Council approved uh, 101 affordable senior units, mm. which is a two-phased uh, uh project. Uh, the first has 101 units and the second phase will have 64. Uh, it was broken into phases because of limited Chaffa funding, but they'll be built by Coble and Company uh, and uh, uh, ranging from 30% AMI to 80% with an average Dang. 56. So um, can't wait to see those come out of the ground. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Yay. That's fantastic, Win, And it's going to be in the new Ridgeside East. Is that right? Yeah, Ridgegate East in what we call the Couplet District. It's where Ridgegate Parkway kind of diverges and converges. Uh, there'll be a grocery store in that Couplet District. I That's wonderful. I always refer it refer to it as like the eyeball, but nobody else does. But <laughs> it's very descriptive, I think, because of of the configuration of the roads. But it'll be a great place, um, and and truly beautiful. Uh, Coble has been a great partner with the city of Lone Tree, and uh, they build high quality beautiful buildings and uh, are able with their other building to make these affordable. So we're grateful. That's fantastic. And when, how would people go about getting on? It, is there going to be a wait list? How there, are residents going to get their name in the hat? There will be a wait list. Uh, I think D Douglas County generally through the housing partnership oh, perfect. has has uh, you know a, a process for their own units taking wait lists and I'm not sure that everyone shares in that wait list but uh, um, but when it's time they do make it known uh, the Talus non-senior project uh, filled up very quickly uh, from their wait list as well so wonderful thank you for that. Sure. Okay, well, let's move on to the county reports. Dawn. Hi. Um, a couple of things, uh, just to reiterate what Barbara said, uh, we are again going to hold our um, combined uh, Arapahoe County and Adams County Eastern Plains meeting in June. And that's been going on, I'm thinking, 15, 20 years, a long time. So it is It is well attended by the people on the Eastern Plains. So um, someone at Dr. Cog might want to put that on their calendar to come out with us. Uh, I'll make sure you get the information. Um, other things, we had not been um, as, as the County Council on Aging for Adams County in great communication with Senior Hub for several years. They had backed out of a lot of things. And and so um, when Franklin took over, he made it a point to try to coordinate with us. And we were very, very grateful for that because we really hadn't had a lot of connection. So I'm sorry that he'll be leaving at some point because that really was a direct line. 
Um, but in addition, we'll keep our eye on that and uh, see if we can't open some other lines of communication on that end. Um, we And I was delighted to hear our county commissioner for stepping up to the plate. Um, they need to do that more often for our seniors in Adams County. Um, I do want to announce that the, the board has appointed uh, a second person to represent Adams County. <laughs> and we have, yeah, his name is Greg Kaler. He's currently the treasurer of ACAN and his name is in front of the county commissioners to be approved and sent on to you guys. So I will invite him to the next meeting so y'all can meet him. And uh, I think you'll find him a delightful gentleman to work with. So um, I was just very pleased with that. So I know how hard it's been to get extra folks. <laughs> so uh, that's my news for today. That's hey. great, Don. That's fantastic. Okay, Gretchen. Yeah, um, I wanted to let you know that the Seniors Council has been in conversation with Nimble Science in discussions about hosting a second meeting of the Allies for Aging. Uh, many of us on this call have, were at that event. And of course, that um, Dr. Cog was working with Nimble Science to uh, make that happen. And we're talking about a possible early to mid-March meeting um, in Douglas County. Uh, we are trying to draw other organizations from not only Denver Metro, but also the Springs. And we thought that that was a nice halfway meeting place. And so as soon as the dates and locations are confirmed, um, we would like to, we will be extending invitations to uh, many organizations and certainly everyone here on this meeting call to attend. Uh, we're hopeful to expand the reach of the allies for aging, not only regionally, but eventually statewide. So very ambitious goal, but wanted to give everybody a heads up on that. Thank you, Gretchen. Mm -hmm. We'll wait for more info. Yes. Any other county reports? Yeah, I can tell you one more thing about ACOA. Um, with passing of our dear Kathy, she was our representative to um, the ACA. So we are having our kind of um, first of the year strategic planning discussion of everything in the world um, on Monday. And we will be putting out there the search for an appropriate candidate. And since I was on that committee, I'm keeping in mind the desire to really um, get a, a, a variety of people and, and pay attention to DEI and you know, maybe it's a business person or something different than what we've done in the past. So I'll just keep you posted. Thank, Thank you, you, Barbara. Thank you. All right. Any other county reports? I'm looking through. I don't see any other hands raised. Um, I would like to invite Tex um, to take a moment and address the council. Thanks. Um the reason my name wasn't called, very efficient uh, Mindy is, was that a, a week ago I turned in my resignation. I will be uh, 92 in about a week. And we sold our wonderful house in Littleton and downsized and uh, have a need to spend some of that money in uh, vacational ways. But I've been with the organization for a long time. I've been astonished during that whole period with the selflessness of the way so many things happen. And those of you who are with me on the council, it's just um, Keep it up. The the group, the new you new people need to know that there is all kinds of support around. And that's true of Dr. Cog. It's true of so many other organizations related to the fact of our membership being associated with so many others. 
And so I just wanted to not just sneak out, but to say, I've had a wonderful experience for about, what, 15 years. Hope I was useful and thank you. Tex, being useful oh, wow. is not a term. Being amazing, being an advocate, being a voice, being a visionary, being a leader. That is, those are the words. And we have been so blessed and lucky and fortunate to have you on this council. I have learned so much from you and from your talents and your guidance. Thank you, sir, for serving. Yeah, we Tex. all just say a happy early birthday to Tex. Yes. <laughs> Even though since, happy since birthday. we can't do it on the day, <laughs> we will so miss you, Tex. Yeah, Thank you will be very missed. But I'll tell you, I hope you find a way to let me know what your travel plans are so I can follow you like I follow Don. <laughs> I, I love seeing this. And I tell Steve, this is what we're going to be doing. You're leading the way for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Are so, there so lucky to have him for so many years? Yeah. He can Thank always pop so in if he gets bored. Yeah. Come oh, visit us. Go. <laughs> as a public, as a public person. And then you'll have up to 45 minutes at the beginning of the meeting to talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, with that, are there any other matters before we adjourn? And we are going to adjourn on time. Now, thank you all for all the input today, um, for the tribute to Kathy, for the good reports from the county, to seeing and hearing what Dr. Cog did to pick up um, what could have been disastrous on the meals uh, so thank you all very much and we will have a virtual meeting on february 23rd right bye everyone bye bye okay that's what's like bye bye take care